if you lose something on an Aer Lingus flight. Now, you may find yourself paying between 20 and 60 euro to get it back. Now, Owen Corey is editor of Travel Extra. And Owen, you've been looking at this story. Good morning to you. Um, Owen, people are going to be looking at this and saying, hang on a tick. I mean, if I leave a laptop behind me on a flight, I could now find myself paying 60 euro to get it back. Yeah, and people are generally glad to get it back. What happens, uh, what's happened over decades, is uh, that people have left important things. It can be basic things like books and caps and uh, mobile phones are a big one. Um, they were the sort of thing that people have been leaving on aircraft for ages. Um, the chances of getting back uh, aren't certain, really. Um, even when you're, you're, you know the flight, sometimes uh, they're never returned. I know people whose laptops were never found. But what has changed is that um, the airlines in general, they do enter this with a degree of enthusiasm and they do try and track it down and it's sort of regarded as a customer service thing. And as usual, uh, this is the erosion of the old customer service concept in airlines around the world. Uh, They've seen this as uh, it is costing them money and they've decided that we have a way of getting it back. And what Aer Lingus have done uh, is contracted it out to a third party. And um, it's a company called WeFounders.ie. They did it about a fortnight ago. And the first reaction we started getting was the beginning of last week and a little bit more this week. But I suspect over the summer, more and more people will discover they're now being charged to find the things that they've lost on aircraft. Uh, I'm very, it, it happens quite a lot. A daughter who left a mobile phone on a, a charter flight and the, they, the aircraft had been to six different countries, Donald, before the phone was recovered. But uh, we did get it back and we got it back free of charge. But, ha- but sadly, those days are probably coming to an end because what Aer Lingus are doing today with this service charge, all the other airlines will be doing tomorrow. And as Aer Lingus are placing it, they, they have uh, subcontracted this out to a partner company. Now, the company, we return it.com, does this uh, cover things like postage and packing and having the item couriered back to your own house, or is it still a matter of you having to make arrangements to collect it at Dublin Airport or wherever? Um, it, generally, it, it, it comes to your house. Uh, dot I, I don't know how that will work uh, on the other the other side of Minaroy and uh, in the distant parts of Ireland, but what... Uh, the, 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 the service was um, that in the previous service was it came back to Dublin Airport and um, it's quite interesting the number of things that have shown up on aircraft as well which were never claimed uh, there's an Aladdin's cave in Dublin Airport of things that were left behind including um, the most extraordinary thing I saw there was an oxygen t- tank I wonder how um, far the person who left the oxygen tank uh, went without without getting the time. But to answer your question, my experience, my my uh, understanding is that it will be delivered to you. Yeah. And I don't have any anecdotal or how the, the system is actually working for that to know if it's working or not. So the, the, the charge appears to be linked more to the size of the item, more so to the level of effort it takes to actually trace the owner. That's basically a 20 euro for something small and 60 euro for the laptop. And, you, you know, you can, your 15-inch MacBook will cost you 3,000 euro uh, nowadays. So the 60 euro would probably be uh, coughed up fairly uh, happily by somebody, not to mention all the data that's on board. It's a, it's a very traumatic experience. People, well, the uh, Aer Lingus business class seat, they have changed the business class seat, but they had an extraordinary business class seat up to uh, three years years ago that um, was almost designed to swallow up mobile phones and uh, the, the, the seat had to be dismantled completely to get the mobile phone back. Thankfully, with the newer seats don't do that anymore. But I was sitting beside somebody in business class who lost their mobile phone and it was a big drama getting it back. It took them weeks to get it back. One, one of the surprising things to read uh, in, in one of the articles I've been looking at is that Ryanair at present charges six euro for the same service and uh, the, the prospect of Aer Lingus charging ten times what Ryanair are charging for a a, a, a sourced out service isn't something we're, we're going to hear very often and one suspects you won't hear about it for much longer. Yeah, excellent coverage by Conor McMahon and Fora.ie of this story and uh, you can be sure that if Michael O'Leary reads that uh, he won't be reducing the charge. He'll be seeing that as a way of uh, bumping the charges up. They, um, they 
hard. To, it, it is one of these things. I mean, uh, it's like uh, chicken pox or measles, what one airline identifies as a source of revenue, ancillary revenue is the trendy word that the guys with the PowerPoint presentations use for it. They all seem to follow. Uh, we, we can go all the way back to when Ryanair first charged for the cup of coffee and there was some absolute shock and Tony Ryan himself had a conniption when Michael O'Leary suggested it. But everybody does that now, I suspect. Uh, that's the way the pendulum is swinging, uh, Donald, and it's not going to swing back uh, in the other direction anytime soon. If you leave something on an aircraft, you're going to be charged for it. There's a company I use uh, for my own holidays and they have a wonderful phrase, for your convenience. And you can that's always be 100% sure if ever a sentence starts for your convenience it'll finish with the words a charge of x number of euro it's one of these things that means the opposite of what it absolutely. says absolutely it's, like, it's like when somebody says in all fairness yeah, or, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no insults but yeah. and that, <laughs> it means the opposite of what they're about to say yeah you're absolutely right Donald Owen you're talking to us from the Sleeve Russell in Cavan you're attending the Irish Hotel Federation uh, conference there an interesting few days yeah, the big AGM was yesterday morning. There's a new president uh, due to be inaugurated tonight at the Gala Ball. Uh, big, just uh, lots of discussion points here. Uh, hoteliers facing challenges on a whole load of fronts. Uh, ch- insurance charges was one of the, the uh, that were rapidly rising insurance charges. Um, the, the claims, the sort of claims that were alluded to there by your caller who said, uh, if you grit your own road, there's a solicitor waiting to try and find a way to sue you. Lots of that sort of stuff. But there's no doubt the Brexit is looming very, very large over it. One of the uh, the border counties, Donegal included, would, uh, especially Donegal, would have seen um, a, a wedding business seriously affected. If you the, the the free fall that Sterling has gone through has hiked up the cost of a wedding in the, in Donegal versus the other side of the border by about 20%. There are 22,000 people getting married in the north every year and quite a lot of that wedding business spills into the border county hotels. They're the, talking to quite a few of them yesterday. They're fretting a little bit about it. which way is this going. They need a bit of leadership uh, being shown on the uh, down in Westminster and they need a bit of um, direction uh, from some sort of clue as to what's going to happen next because it's quite clear the British politicians are just talking to themselves at this stage. But what the hoteliers are saying is um, wedding business would sustain uh, they largely sustain a lot of those hotels in border counties. They need um, to know what's happening in the coming years because you don't just uh, phone on Friday for a wedding the following Saturday. Um, it's something that t- t- takes a bit of a lead in time and they're fretting a little bit about that, Donald. So the fact that the substantive trade talks are set to begin, we're told, or at least set to be agreed in March, uh, would suggest that the Brexit negotiations are moving into the meat and two veg that really they need in terms of giving some idea as to what the trading conditions are going to be like into the future. And I'm sure the Irish Hotels Federation, just like farmers, fishermen and everybody else, are going to be watching those very closely. Absolutely, it's 13 months. I mean, it, it, most of the weddings are booked quite yeah. a good deal out. And it's a very, it, it's one of the factors. Everybody's talking about coach parties and spend and, you know, the, the people in that, that come around, the British tourists coming in, which declined by 6% last year. But uh, it's a, the real um, meat and two veg, to, to use your phrase, for uh, border hoteliers is that wedding business, a lot of which spills across the border. And uh, they're serious. They they really really want to know uh, what's going on there. Owen Corey, thank you very much indeed for thank speaking to us this morning.